The Winning Cures Everything College Football Recap for week number nine. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can go and wager and watch on games at any of their six sports books, the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and the sports book at the Fitz Casino. You can find more information on that over at tunicatravel.com. You can also get a whole bunch of stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on social media. Follow us everywhere. Hit subscribe on the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and help us out. Let's go on and jump in. Week 9, the biggest game of the weekend, Georgia-Florida. Did you watch the game? I did watch this game. Now, at what point did you actually turn it off? Um, or did you ever turn it off? No, I think I made it all the way through. That. Now, I was going back and forth at the 2.30 time. There were four games that mattered to me at 2.30. Um, and, and so I was going back and forth quite a bit. Now, but I was I, here. I'll tell you this. I, I don't know what you're going to break down and what you're going to give me, but, hey, they ran the football. They did run the football. They did run the football. Uh, it's one of the things that I brought up about it. Uh, I did go back and forth a lot between that and Penn State, Iowa. Uh, Kentucky, Missouri was a 3 o'clock game. That was a good game. That was a fun game. Which one? Kentucky, Missouri? Kentucky, Missouri. That was a lot of fun. We'll get to that one in a minute. But uh, Low scoring, but, but SEC football, man. Yeah, SEC, a, a, a real legit SEC football. And not what you would expect from, like, Missouri, right? But either way, uh, Georgia 36, Florida 17. I turned it off when it got to be 29 to 17, and I realized that Florida had – no chance no, at winning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked I, – okay, but see, this is where we're different. I kind of like watching Mullins just twist in the wind. Uh, when there's so much more football on, I've got better things to do. Maybe, maybe. You know, like, yeah. I, I, look, he first-year coach, I understand. It's going to be a little bit before Florida is uh, – but it, it's it's interesting to see that he's already got them there, right? Like, they're okay. they're really close. Uh, Jake Fromm, 17-24, 240 yards, three touchdowns. So, for all the people that have been talking about Justin Fields, back up off that a little bit. Pump the brakes. Georgia, 429 total yards of offense. Florida had 275. Swift and Holyfield combined for 32 carries, 175 yards, and one touchdown. They ran the football all over Florida. They got some uh, some costly turnovers from Felipe Franks and that bunch. Georgia looks good. They, it, they, 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 they are good. That, that's they what are this, good. Uh, it, it, it's almost exactly like last season, right? Where they go into Auburn, they get hammered, they come back out, I, they're fired up. I, sta- I stand behind my statement that Kirby Smart cannot go on the road in a hostile environment. Well, I mean, he went to South Carolina, but that one, that, got, that, that one got not hostile very quickly. That's, yeah, that, I don't you know, know that that was a real hostile environment. Oh, that's it, don't don't tell South Carolina fans. I, that. I know they are. How about this? A hostile think, environment against a, a really good team. Maybe maybe you're right. Okay, well, yeah, that's part of it. I mean, how hostile are bad teams? I mean, Tennessee, when they're in the heyday, that's Look, a tough I, place to go play. But right now, anybody right can now, go yeah. there. Right now, not so much. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that, that, this game in and of itself was interesting and impressive. It was really impressive for Georgia. Now, I know we got a lot of games to get to. Let me ask you this. Before the game, both Kirby and Dan made comments that – they would like to see the cocktail party disband it and then just start playing home and home like everybody else. They've talked about that a lot. Uh, Steve Spurrier talked about it quite a bit. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Why do you think they play the neutral site game? Why won't they? Because that's a lot of revenue for those schools that they're losing. Uh, no, not so much. You don't think they, getting the a home neutral game every site other game? The reason why teams do the neutral site games is because you have sponsors that that want it in that stadium the city pays a little bit of it you make more money doing that than, than you every do. other year playing it at home yeah okay yeah it's i know it sounds so goofy. coaches want it because they want a home field advantage every other year yes and they're willing to give up home field advantage every other year yeah okay yeah uh okay. if i was florida i would never want to do that oh florida would be dumb to want it and the state of florida would be dumb to want it because they yeah. still get a crap load of revenue at state yep and Georgia school gets more money, but they don't. It, but the it state doesn't help anything else. Yeah, uh, let's move on from that. Let's talk about Washington State forty-one, Stanford thirty-eight. Man, Stanford led twenty-eight to seventeen at the half. Gardner Minshew forty out of fifty for four hundred thirty-eight yards, uh, three touchdowns, game-winning field goal with nineteen seconds left. Washington State's remaining schedule: home against Cal, at Colorado, home against Arizona, and then the Apple Cup. 
Home against Washington. I was about to say, and that's at home too. Yeah. And they were looks, on the road so much to start the season. They get to finish this thing off a lot of home games. Yeah. Whole lot of home games. Uh, three out of the last four. And then Pac-12 North. Like it, At this point, Washington has lost three games. Correct. Washington State. If Washington loses, say, to Stanford... Washington State could lose that game and still go still, to the Pac-12 championship. Still go to the Pac-12 championship. No, they right. wouldn't have a shot at the playoff at that point. But you know, right now if, they've got a shot. If if they win out, I'm, I really am hoping for all kind of chaos, just because I want to see a world where Leach gets in. I I think there should be a rule where if if he's like, if there's even a chance, you have to put him in just for the entertainment. It, value. You, you say it all the time. It's a TV show. It's a TV show. Yeah. There is no greater character than him to have in this TV show. I agree. That's that's just the truth of it. That, I and want they to... should be undefeated. This yeah. is literally the Pac-12 bet on the wrong horse. Yeah. The Pac-12 officials said, we really need to help USC out. Let's, yeah. let's, let's give them a call here. And... That has not they worked helped, out in their favor. They backed the wrong horse. They most certainly did. Let's uh, let's jump off that. Let's talk about Penn State 30, Iowa 24. Now, did you watch this? I watched some, but not as much. Okay, so with about four minutes left, there's a first and goal at the Penn State 3 for Iowa, and they are down 30 to 24. They score a touchdown. They kick the extra point. They got the lead, right? Now, Oh, you're talking about the end of the game. This is then the I, end of the I game. I was watching a lot at the end. I was this, lot is, the end. this is the end of the game. Um, Nate Stanley hurt his throwing hand at some point. His thumb was all screwed up. 18 out of 49 for him, 205 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. One of those picks, they rushed the play on that first and goal. They had a timeout in their back – well, they had multiple timeouts in their back pocket that they should have absolutely used. The crowd was loud enough that Noah Fant could not hear them changing the play. And he doesn't move when the ball snapped. And Nate Stanley throws to him anyway. He doesn't, it, and it's it's one of those quick time plays where you just throw the ball and the guy should be there. It looks like the pick play. Oh, my God. It looks God. like the other two receivers are setting the pick. They're blocking already before the ball gets there. Yeah. And he just never turns around. Never turned around. Ball went straight to the Penn State uh, defensive back. Gone. Uh, well, and he, he should have been. Had he not fallen down, yeah. he was absolutely gone. Um, but man, like that was just a killer play. One, I had Iowa plus five and a half. All I needed there was a field goal, you know, and, and with four minutes left, like God, if they don't get in the end zone, they're kicking the field goal. Cause that's what Kirk Ferentz does. But man, I, look, Iowa was somewhat impressive in this game. Even with Nate Stanley having problems, uh, defense looked pretty good. They held Trace McSorley down. McSorley was injured for a little bit. Now, he didn't look great uh, all game, but I think Iowa's defense had a lot to do with that. I agree with that. Um, but Wisconsin going down, like, Iowa still got a chance to win the uh, the Big 12. Uh, not Big 12. Uh, Big 10 uh, uh, West. Correct. So, in the grand scheme of things, like, this could have been a leg up, but, I mean, it doesn't kill you. I don't think Iowa was going to get in the playoff anyway. But, uh, but Penn State, I mean, good home win. Definitely a good home win. Oh, no. Any, anytime you beat one of those bigger teams. And I think I was one of those bigger teams. I think they're a good team, and I think that's a big deal for Franklin and, and the guys at Penn State. I can't figure out what Penn State is. Like, I, I just – I don't think Penn State knows what they're – they don't have every, an identity. Yeah, every week I'm trying to figure out are they good, are they not? Can they compete in this league week in and week out? Is it that they just make bonehead plays to give games away? Because they're not getting blown out in any of these games. No. But but they've dropped a lot of games, and I just can't figure out, are these just mistakes that kids are going to make, and this is part of college football? Are they not well coached? Are they not prepared? Like, I don't, I don't know what Penn State is. And it's really frustrating to watch them play, by the way. I'm curious what they're going to be without McSorley next year. I mean, because he is everything for that team. I mean, he just he – I mean, we, we got to trust Franklin's going to have somebody behind him because he's always done it. Yeah, but Franklin hasn't been anywhere long enough to, you know. I mean, you see what I'm saying. Yeah. I He's just been assume, there for a long time. I just but assume if you can win at a high level at Vanderbilt, you can kind of do anything. It, you would think so. Uh, maybe I'm giving him way too much credit for that, but well, no, I, think, I saw I think what maybe he did at Vandy, and I thought, 
maybe that he guy is probably se- should be coaching on Sundays because this is a garbage program. Well, but I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that the SEC East was so down. Yeah, Florida was terrible. Tennessee was terrible. Uh, Kentucky, of course, was Kentucky. Like there, there just wasn't a whole lot of competition. Like the wins that they got at Vanderbilt, one, you, you're never really supposed to beat anybody when you're at Correct. Vanderbilt. Oh, the expectation is low, but. You know, getting a win over, like, just a, a downtrodden Georgia team, getting a win over, you know, a not very good Florida team, a not very good Tennessee team, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. Okay. You know, so when you it, when you look at it as, man, he took Vanderbilt to nine wins, like, twice. Hey, I'm about to like, say, that's a twice, big deal. That's a, kind of a big deal. But at the same time, when you look at what the competition was, eh, you know. Okay. Um. So I, I'm curious to see what he does without Sor- or McSorley. And then we'll just go from there. I think he, he might be um, a victim of, like, his own expectations. Probably. Because well, no, I can he, see that. He has set the bar so high. No, I think the bar in Penn State is, is 10 wins. I mean, I, I, it, think, yeah. I think that's it. It is now. They're a double-digit win program, and if he's not there, it's going to be tough. So. Yeah, it, it could be tough the next few years. I'm I'm curious. I'm very curious. Oklahoma State thirty eight, Texas thirty five. Gundy, we didn't, we didn't talk about this in the uh, in the preview. We didn't, and we we had some people call us out on got YouTube. Little, got a little Look, for Oklahoma it. State was kind of, yeah. I mean, when you score twelve points against this Kansas State team, not you kind of give up the right to be talked about in a in a big game preview. I'll tell you this: um, I, I was so disappointed in Gundy this whole year because he's kind of just been blah. And listen, you you can't look like that. And be blah. You gotta, you gotta be the goofball that you are. Yeah. And as soon as he won, man, he he turned it right back on. Yeah, he did. Like it was nothing. Yeah, he he was leaning back in the press conference, and he was asked answering questions with just all the confidence in the world. He didn't care. It was just, <laughs> it was just unbelievable. Oklahoma State did lead uh, thirty-one to fourteen at the half. It was seventeen to seven after the first quarter. Oklahoma State had two hundred and seventy yards after that first quarter. They just came out on fire. Uh, let's talk about Tom Herman and Mike Gan- uh, Mike Gundy. Okay, they they nearly fought at the end. Uh, it, Herman it, Herman Herman got a little butt hurt there. I think that's exactly what it was. And his um, feelings hurt. Didn't like losing. But these these games are so emotional, and and there's so much tension involved because like for Texas, this was you win this game, you got a shot to go to the college football playoff. Like Oklahoma State's playing with house money. Like, it doesn't matter. They can just throw anything out there, and they've already lost three games. It doesn't, Correct. Who cares? Um, at what point are we going to actually see coaches fight because emotions run that high? I, I think it's, it's, it's almost happened several times I this think year. it's all really hard because there's so many people between them and 50 yards. Yeah. It's like, like if they were college basketball and you just pretty much had – you know, a, a TV bench and, and an announcer's bench in between you, then then we're having a different conversation. Yeah, I dude. used to think, why don't they put college basketball guys doing some some mechanics here? I might have broke his microphone when I said, look, <laughs> could have been some sabotaging going on. Um, there we go. I, I used to think, why don't they do college basketball the same way as, as college football, other side and on the opposite corner, you know? Well, they do that in uh, – no, they don't no, do they that don't in do NBA it, games. They don't do it for anything. Huh. So, anyway, just just a random thought. I don't think they'll actually ever come to blows unless it's somebody old school Cal Perry situation with the dude from Temple. I can't believe my mind is going blank. Where, John Chaney. John Chaney, that was it, where it's got to be at a press conference. It's got to be completely off the, the mark. But I'll tell you this, man. I can't or, tell or you. like going into the locker room or something like that. Sometimes. I mean, it's, it, I think they do. But a that pretty depends good job on of, the stadium. They and, keep. They do a good job of keeping most of these. They try to keep the team separated. I definitely think the coaches are going to stay separated. I don't know. This is the difference between <laughs> the NFL and college in the sense that we try to say every game matters. Where a that's bull. Every game doesn't matter. Um, this LSU Alabama game. Is, is not going to matter. The LSU-Georgia game did not matter at all. Um, so it, it's one of those things where there's this fictional thing that we tell everybody that every game's so important. Well, I think – And think because they're so important, Like, losses coaches, obviously matter more than, than wins do, right? Like, for Georgia, yeah, that LSU game was really important because now there is no leeway. Like, you, oh, you can't okay. lose another now, game. You can't lose another one. 
You can't lose it. But, right. But that means this game didn't matter. The game that they lose next. Well, but the maybe only reason matter. that it doesn't matter is because all these other teams have lost, right? So, like, when you lose, it's no longer in your hands. Like, you have to bank on other teams losing. Okay. I just don't. I, but I, I see I where you're coming from. Michigan but, lost early in the season, and and now they have a chance to play their way in. We think Ohio State, if they went out, they might get in. Like all, of the, we try to tell everybody every game matters, but it really doesn't. It's just a bullshit thing that we say. Okay, yeah. it, and because we've promoted this culture that every game matters, these coaches feel that. Yeah, and they coach like it, and they get they're humans. They're not machines. They're not robots, and and. They get fired up. Yeah, they certainly do. Yeah, and Tom Herman definitely did. Yeah, definitely did. Um, so can uh, so Texas uh, drops back to what fifteen in the AP poll. They fall pretty far, and they uh, should. And they and I'm assuming they, that they will drop to two, three, and four loss teams. Yeah, yeah, they do. You you you, you can't beat Oklahoma and pound your chest and then lose to to Oklahoma two teams State and Maryland that have seven combined losses. Yeah, Kentucky fifteen, Missouri fourteen. Like we got to give props to this. This dude is a dude. Terry Wilson, 22 out of 31, 267 yards passing. Uh, he had one touchdown, one interception, and that one touchdown, it was the game-winning TD with no time left. Uh, look, Kentucky, like they had a punt return with five minutes left in the game, and that brought them back because it was 14-3 to forever. This was such a boring game. This defense... Has anybody all year held Missouri to this few points? Yeah, Alabama. That was ten, right? That was ten. That was 10. But that's it. That's I mean, that is it. That's it. And it's, this team the scores thing that I talked thirty about. and forty on everybody. Yeah, it's it's what I talked about in the gambling picks when I took Kentucky plus seven. Is Kentucky's defense is really they, really they, good? They really. Are. We said old school SEC football, and we think when LSU and Mississippi State and Auburn have these games. Like, that's what you're talking about. We don't expect it from Kentucky and Missouri. No, you, you need to start expecting it from Kentucky. Because Kentucky is playing. Like they did Stoops, it to Florida. They did it to oh, State. Yeah. Mark They've Stoops is doing the Missouri. smart thing here. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky lets you beat yourself. Correct. Right? Because Missouri had a chance to win this game. 141 left in the game. Missouri third and two on their own side of the field. And Derek Dooley calls a pass. Like, Kentucky had one timeout left. You run the football, you got a better chance yeah. of converting on third and two with a run anyway. Um, but they, make they a, throw a pass. You force them to burn the timeout. Right. They throw a pass, and it's incomplete. The clock stops. They got to give Kentucky the ball back. Terry Wilson, on the first play of the next drive, Boom. takes a sack, and they have to call their timeout there. If they don't call the timeout there, I mean, that's, you're, that's, that's 30 something seconds off the clock. Yeah. And they don't have that if it's less than a minute thirty left in the game. Correct. Like, so so Missouri kind of beat themselves in this spot. Like, oh, it, yeah. you you give up a punt return for a touchdown, and then you you call a pass play on third and two with a minute forty left. Like, give me a break, man. Barry Odom, Derek Dooley, not nah, smart, buddy. Uh, Houston fifty seven, South Florida thirty six. I'm only bringing this up because we we talked about it being a big game, and it did turn out to be a big game for Houston. Um. I lost a lot on this game, by the way. Boy, Houston is, I oh, mean, they are putting up some points. Boy, uh, total yardage, Houston had 682 total yards. South Florida, 467. We had 1,149 yards. Who got a mighty? De'Eric King, this dude is legit. I, I gave Terry Wilson props. Let me give De'Eric King some props. 28 out of 41, 419 yards passing, five touchdowns, two picks. He also ran it 12 times for 132 yards and two touchdowns. That man accounted for 551 yards of total offense and seven touchdowns. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's a lot. Look, this guy under – Kendall Bryles has the ability to make – if anybody wants to, like, deal with all of the other crap that comes with the Bryles name, but you, you will get a blame, good coach. We do a pretty good job – in our country, in our world, of not blaming a son for the father's sins. Like, that's just it. Agreed. But, okay. but Kendall was on the staff at he, Baylor he when was that was going on. He was on the staff, but he was really young. Hell, he's yeah. still really young. Yeah, he, so, had, he didn't – it wasn't his thing, I don't. I don't right? know that that guy was like 21, But I'm saying when all that, stuff was that 
in our culture, sometimes just the name itself brings bad PR. I'm gonna tell you this. I take it. From There's my a reason OC. that that there there better be nine major power conference power five conference teams with him on the list of offensive coordinator next year. Uh, yes, hundred percent. Yeah, if if 100%. not if not more. Well, I mean, he there's a reason he got fired at Baylor Correct. and then went to Florida Atlantic, took them to a conference USA title with like the most efficient offense in the country last year. Goes to Houston, the most efficient offense in the country this year. Like it doesn't even take an entire off season for him to implement his plan. Yep. It's crazy. Uh, so Houston, like. It looks like they may wrap up the uh, the AAC West pretty soon. Uh, that's probably going to be a loss for, for our hometown Memphis Tigers, I would imagine, even though the game is at the Liberty Bowl. Because um, they may put up well, 100. See, they, in that we, hang on now. Like, Memphis plays really well at home. Yeah. They play really well at home. They, they still score, might put up 100. They though. score with the best of them. And so I, I'll be curious what the over-under is on that because Houston will give up some points. So I'd, I'd imagine the over-under is probably going to open at like 84, 85. <laughs> I'm dead serious. We'll we'll have to wait. That's in late November. We'll get to that. Uh, Mississippi State 28, Texas A&M 13. What the hell was that? I Nick Fitzgerald. Uh, Nick Fitzgerald, 88 rushing yards, two touchdowns, 14 out of 22 passing for 241 yards and two touchdowns. He had 59 yards passing against LSU. I know. I just I don't understand it. State defense held well, A&M. I mean, I do, I, okay, LSU, A&M. Probably not playing the same game defensively. Agree. We, we get that. But this is not about the defense. This is about a guy that couldn't throw on anybody. No. And now all of a sudden he's figured out how to throw the football. It's Is it's this weird. an anomaly or is this what we're going to see from him next week? I, Can I, he do it two weeks in a row? No. See, I would bet against it too. And no. I'm not just trying to take shots at a guy. I just I've never seen him do it. They don't they have a bye week this week? Oh, uh, maybe. Then yeah. I think they have a bye, and then they play Alabama. Oh, well, yeah, he's definitely probably not going to get it two weeks in a row. So, but it, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You never know. Alabama's defense has definitely given up some uh, some big plays this year. Northwestern thirty one, Wisconsin seventeen. I cannot. I could not believe this game. I could not. I watched a lot, a lot of this game. The line dropped <clears throat> significantly once it was announced that Alec Hornibrook was not going to play. Uh, but they didn't lose it. Wisconsin didn't lose this game because of Hornibrook. No. Wisconsin lost this game because they did things they have never done. Wisconsin runs the ball down your throat. And one thing they do when they run the ball or they don't they do. don't fumble. They, they don't, don't turn, it over. turn the ball over ever, ever. They'll hand the ball off 50 times a game and won't put it on the ground. Yeah. And they fumbled it three, four times and yeah. lost all of them. Three three times. But both teams had three turnovers. If Wisconsin's were way more detrimental to what they were trying yeah. to do. Uh, Bad, Clayton man. Thorson, 17 out of 30, one touchdown, three interceptions, I, I kind of expected yards. from him, though. He's done this a lot. Yeah. He uh, plays with fire, man. Isaiah Bowser, 117 yards rushing on 34 carries, one touchdown. Yeah. Not a great yards per carry average, but still, they, they had a 100-yard rusher. He Well, he towed at the rock when he needed the, when they needed him to. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he certainly did. Northwestern is your uh, your Big Ten West leader, leader. with Washington, Purdue fell. Wisconsin, and Purdue. Yeah, with Wisconsin, yeah, and Iowa, Purdue falling. Iowa, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Purdue all dropped, and Northwestern just keeps on rolling. It, this has got to be the most frustrating thing for Northwestern fans. We're looking at you, Westlot Pirates. Uh, Pat Fitzgerald goes out, lays a dud against Nebraska, lays a dud against well, Rutgers. Got, at least they got, they got the they win. Got the win. But, but the, then you the come out to, against uh, who was the loss to the Akron? Akron, that was it. Which wasn't a conference loss. Yeah, but I'm just saying like that national schedule wise, that kills you. Yeah, it does. Like, you you come be, out, you score seven points against Duke early in the year yeah. at home. Yeah, like like those are those yeah. are two games that if they could get any games back, they would they would want both. They're of those. non-conference at least, uh, Akron. Yeah, at least Akron. Yeah. Arizona 44, Oregon 15. You stay up late and watch this one? No. I, I stayed up. I watched it for well, a little while. I was up late, but Dude. I was up I was up late World watching Series. the worst of Red yeah. Sox. Um, I watched zero dark football. Oregon had three turnovers. They only had 3.8 yards per play. It's 270 yards of total offense. J.J. Taylor for Arizona, 30 runs, 212 yards, two touchdowns. Khalil Tate, 19 out of 35 passing, 189 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. 
This game was in Arizona, right? Yeah. It, Oregon just finally ran completely out of That's gas. That's three road games in a row. They went to. No, no, no. It was two road games in a row. Well, then they play Cal between. Uh, no, Cal was early on. It was it. Cal was before. Uh, before. Oh God, who did they play at home? Sure. Washington. Yeah, Cal okay. was Cal was before Washington. For some reason, they had I that they big had emotional three. win at Washington. Then they go and they lose at Washington State, mm-hmm. uh, and then they lose this game. Then they lose right. at Arizona. For it looks like Kevin three. Sumlin is kind of getting things rolling a little bit. Maybe I, I don't. I'm I'm not going to pretend to know what's going on there. As bad as they've looked all year, it's it's impossible to predict anything that they're doing. You are correct about that. We got to roll through these uh, the last few. Uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of scores, but Boston College twenty seven, Miami Boom. fourteen. AJ Dillon with one hundred forty nine yards rushing. Uh, and one touchdown, Miami, just not good at quarterback right now. It doesn't matter who they've got out there. Malik, uh, what, what do they call him, Rozier? Ro- Ro- Rozier. But I, I think Rozier is what everybody called him, and now he's Rozier. Oh, so I didn't know that. We'll, fig- we'll figure that out. Um, I think after Tarod came out and changed his, then all, Rozier came all, out. All so. I know is is I cashed some money on that one. Yeah, no, I, and, I did, and so did I. I. I did so did really I. well uh, BC, financially. Is is BC the only chance to upset Clemson? You think? I mean, yeah, I don't think anybody else on their schedule is going to beat them, and I don't think BC is going to beat them. But I'd I'd love to see. But the game is the game is at Boston College, correct? So BC travels to Virginia Tech this week, and then they host Clemson. So, bunch of big games in a row for them. Michigan State twenty three, Purdue thirteen. Rocky Lombardi. Now you talk about a football name. That is a football name right there. It's his first start for Michigan State. 26 out of 46, 318 yards, two touchdowns. Obviously, Mark D'Antonio was not worried about uh, a new quarterback coming in and no. throwing the football. He threw it 46 freaking times. Yep. Purdue only had 62 rushing yards. David Blau threw three interceptions, had no touchdowns. Purdue, this was a, a hangover game, but this is also what Michigan State does. Like This is just what they do. Uh, let's talk about just a few of these. Clemson 59, Florida State 10. That nothing to talk about there. Arizona State thirty eight, USC thirty five. First loss in twenty games at the Coliseum for Clay Helton. And Herm Edwards is the one that beat him. <laughs> My boy, the fighting Herms, baby. Believe that Herm Edwards is now four and four. Cal twelve, Washington ten. I don't know any. I can't. I can't try to figure out the Pac twelve. Remember when we did our Pac twelve preview? Yeah. And and I went into it saying. I have no idea about any of these teams. I don't think anybody else did either. We're nine weeks into the season. I still have, other than I think Wazoo is the best team in the country and Mike Leach should be king of the world. <laughs> like, like I don't know anything about any of these teams. No, it, it, and up until this Saturday, it, I have watched a lot of Pac-12 football. Yeah, it, it, even watching it, you still can't figure any I, of this stuff out. I got out. No, no idea. Sense. And if you think you know it, you're Put your hand down. You're lying. Yeah. You're, you're just lying. Absolutely you lying. don't know. Syracuse 51, NC State 41. Uh, boy, NC State been giving up points. Uh, Syracuse is a good team, man. Syracuse, Syracuse is a good, good team. team. At home, Syracuse is a real good team. Dino Babers. I know. Dino Babers, baby. He's going to a bowl game this year. Uh, South, And this will be his first bowl game at Syracuse. Good stuff. It, South, won't, be, it won't be his last. South Carolina 27, Tennessee 24. The referee is absolutely screwed up on a goal line fumble. And it it was an eight point swing in this game. South Carolina lucky to get out of there at home with a win. Uh, Kansas twenty seven, TCU twenty six. Holy God, they warned us about TCU earlier this year. They said the over under was seven and a half wins. We both thought they were crazy. Whoo, this is bad. Vegas knew something. I didn't know. Uh, well, Vegas might have given them a little more than what they are. I mean, let, let me ask you this. Well, with Sean Robinson going out with the with the uh, hurt shoulder, like he's out for the Is, year. I, I, so at some point in time, even even guys I love got to take it. At, at what point is this on Gary? At what point is this on Patterson? Yeah. I, think, I think he's one of the best coaches in the country. Like, without question in the top ten, could easily be in the top five of coaches in all of college football. But at some point in time, you got to wear this record, man. But there's, there is no reason why they should have close games with Kansas no. on a regular basis. No, 
Like this team is immensely. But it's not more just the Kansas game. I mean, it's been a lot. No, of games. Be, yeah, but this and is like multiple and, games with Kansas, and it's that mistakes. Yeah, it is fumbling the football at some point in time. Football security is your responsibility as the coach to make sure they don't do that anymore. I like agree. I don't I don't know how to make you do it. That's why I'm not a coach. But but that's your job. You yeah. got to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. I don't I don't know the answer to this. I really like him a lot. I can't think that he just woke up and all of a sudden now he's not good at coaching. I mean, if if Virginia Tech kind of falls apart and they want to get rid of Fuente. Like I could see him leaving Virginia Tech before. Like if if Patterson just decided, you know what, it ain't working at TCU anymore. I'm, I'm gonna a, I'm a go take one of these else. other jobs. I could see Fuente going back to TCU. Well, there's not as much pressure. Exactly. I mean, obviously I would, there's no pressure. And I would there. tell you this: I would rather coach in Texas. I would rather recruit in Texas. I mean, I mean, I, it's Dallas for I, mean, I, I think on. I think recruiting bases. I think perfect. there's a reason Kendall, not just because Houston's a bigger and better job than FIU, but it, FAU, FAU. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do that all the time. By the way, it happens. Um, I I think he he's comfortable in Texas. He knows the kind of talent that's there, and he knows how to go get it. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I agree. Um, we'll close up on this another Big Twelve game. Iowa State forty, Texas Tech thirty one. This was a good ball game. Really good game. This was a really good ball game. Uh, Matt this, Campbell. This line whew, jumped, jumped a ton. It they went got lucky from to minus cover. four to minus seven in a day. Yeah, yeah, in, it was, in, it was in a crazy. day. All right, that is our college football week nine recap.